Well, hello. Welcome back to the Kingsway Podcast. Glad you're choosing to tune in today. Uh, I hope that this has been an encouragement to you, a little bit of a challenge, maybe helping you on your journey as we continue to pursue full life and following Jesus. Uh, today's topic and uh, something that I think each of us at some point has had a small question about or maybe even a deep struggle or doubt in um, has been uh, the, the idea of pain and suffering. Um, and I know in our context here at Kingsway, there's definitely been some uh, moments of deep suffering and pain that have caused some doubts and some frustrations um, in our church and in the people around us, whether it's something that's directly happened to you um, that has caused pain and trauma or whether it's something that you've observed in someone else, or maybe it's something that uh, you've watched just someone you love go through. I think it's it's a challenging question to ask why. You know, why is this happening? It's a question that's been around for a long time. And I know for my own journey, um, a number of years ago, I think almost seven years ago, it was a question that when I got into it and I really started researching and asking questions and realizing the depth of the, that doubt, it was uh, one that caused some real moments of despair and hurt. Uh, it really challenged my faith. But I think it's worth talking about. In fact, I think it's worth uh, worth mentioning and talking about because it's it's one of the oldest questions. Uh, it's definitely the oldest question uh, in the book of the Bible, or I should say in the Bible. The oldest book in the context of when it was written uh, is actually the book of Job. And I think that's really good to remind yourself and even to remind myself at times that although chronologically Genesis would be the older of the chronological stories of how God would see the world and how humanity is laid out and the struggle of which we each of us have to come to realize that God is sovereign and we need to follow him. The, the oldest question at this is God worthy of our trust is found in the book of Job and that's in pain and suffering. And I think that helps me understand that the depth of this question is not something to be under undermined or undervalued. I think it's worthy of our time. And I I think it's healthy for us to kind of ask that. So in, in the context of that, thinking with your current situation, whether you are currently in a very painful time uh, and you're watching something or, you're, or you are doubting uh, and you're worried about uh, whether or not your faith can you know, get through um, the pain and the hurt and whether you are questioning because of the suffering of the innocents around you or whether you're a little separated from it. Maybe you haven't had a moment like that happen uh, in a while or maybe ever and you see it from a distance and you wonder, um, I think today might be a helpful thing. Now, in my journey, like I said several years ago, uh, I, I clung to one section of scripture, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. I, I have kind of a, a kind of, dis, I just despise coffee cup coffee cup answers. That's that's kind of my thing. I hate like this idea of like, like this one piffy statement that you could put on a coffee cup would be the thing that you would be told in your moment of, of pain and suffering, uh, mainly because I just feel like those are so cliche and they're so easily uh, slapped onto deep, uh, dark hurts. And it doesn't really work in the long run. And so in my journey to try to figure this out, I didn't want to try to find those types of answers. I didn't want a piffy statement. I wanted, I wanted real I wanted real life. And it took a while. Um, but I landed on uh, one set of scriptures that I want to share with you today. And I don't expect it to be I don't expect it to be the full answer for you. I don't think that in 12 or 15 minutes or whatever this ends up being that you should walk away going, oh, I have it all figured out. I, I just hope that it encourages you a little bit in your your pursuit like Job um, to ask and to be honest and to be open with your pain and hurt and suffering and to put it at Jesus's feet. Um, the section I want to, I want you to look at, and I'm going to reference it, but I won't, I won't read it, but I think it'd be healthy for you to, uh, is to go to John chapter 11. And it's one of my favorite sections of scripture, and it's intentionally put in the center of John's gospel, um, because it's the linchpin to hold everything together from John one, all the way through the end of John, uh, the resurrection, and then the ultimate gift of the church uh, new salvation and full life. And in John 11, uh, we find the context of Jesus being in the missionary work, uh, but finding out one of his friends, his close friends that he grew up with, Lazarus, being sick. And he doesn't make it home in time uh, before Lazarus dies. And 
there's a lot of intentionality behind why Jesus chooses to wait. Uh, obviously, he's God and he could get there as soon as he wants to, but he has a bigger plan. And we're told in the text that he was waiting so that something better could be shown um, and so that people would come to believe. But it didn't nullify that a man, Lazarus, had to get sick and eventually did die. And Jesus finds out that his friend dies and he comes back to the village that that Lazarus is buried in and he finds uh, Lazarus' family there and they're suffering and they're hurting. And they have all these questions because they, they know Jesus and they've heard the rumors that Jesus has healed others. In fact, a lot of people. And they're wondering why he would not choose to heal someone that was a friend, that was close to him. Why, why would this pain and suffering, why would he not choose to heal his friend. And so one of Lazarus' sisters meets him actually at the edge of the city and, and asks, you know, why? Why didn't you come? You, you're too late. And uh, Jesus responds with, uh, as Jesus always does, with just this beautiful answer of like, don't you believe in the resurrection? And of course, Mary or Martha is putting in the context of like the final resurrection, right? And so there's this like thought in her mind. She's like, of course, I know one day we'll be together again. And like, it's the coffee cup answer is what she thinks she's getting, you know, from Jesus. And so she kind of just casts it away and he kind of, he's like, no, nah, it's not really what I'm talking You can just tell Jesus like, no, nah, you're not getting it yet. And he goes a little further into the city and guess what? Uh, Lazarus, other sister shows up, Mary and Mary asks the same thing, but Mary's heart is a little bit more tender. And you can tell she's just, she's really hurting. And the text is that she was deeply troubled. And Jesus, of course, gives her a very similar answer. Don't you believe that he will be raised again? And and of course, she says yes, and she, you know, she has that response of faith, but she doesn't get it. And then the text takes just this incredible. The story just takes this incredible turn that I, I, I have in my mind constantly when it comes to the topic of pain and suffering. Uh, Jesus says, "Where's the body?" And so they start to walk towards where the body is buried. And the text says he is deeply troubled and is in pain. And then he does something that. I think blows my mind when I know the full story. He, he cries, he weeps and he does it in such a way that actually the text records that not only does he weep, but the people that were with him at the time literally say, can't you see how much Jesus loved Lazarus? That's to the point of despair that he steps into in this story. And why that it doesn't it doesn't baffle me that Jesus being fully human even though fully god that he would cry i mean it's it's pain it's it's hurt he's lost a friend what baffles me about that is that jesus has a secret that no one else knows and i don't know if you've ever had a secret that would change the outcome um it's kind of like when someone loses something and then you find it and no one else knows yet Everyone else is still panicked. Everyone else is still worried. Everyone else is still stressed, but you know you have it and you get to tell everyone in just a few seconds. You don't cry in that moment. You don't, you don't freak out. You don't, you're not full of pain in that. You're full of celebration and excitement. So why is Jesus crying here? In, in just a few verses, he's going to raise Lazarus, his friend, from the grave. He's going to come back. I would be so giddy. I would be so excited. I would just be like, come on, come on, come on, come and, come and see. I would be smiling and joyful. But Jesus doesn't do that. He, he cries. And what's so amazing about that and what's so life-giving to me about that is that Jesus doesn't rush through their pain. He's present in it. He doesn't run away from the heartache or the struggle or the suffering. He doesn't brush aside their, their perspective and their grief. He sits with them in it. Even if just for a moment, he is fully present in their pain. And I know for me, that was the comforting thought that changed everything. That even though my limited perspective at times in pain and suffering, Jesus isn't mad at me, uh, frustrated at me that I'm sad, angry, disappointed. He's with me and he's there, weeping, crying, angry too, because this wasn't the way he wanted it to be any more than we did. And in fact, what it reveals to me is that the reason he came was because of the pain and the suffering. And it reveals itself so well in that story 
that he saw our context and he wanted to change the outcome. He felt the pain and he was willing to step into it. And truly, that's what the cross really is. He's willing to go through the pain to make the change for you and I. And in that way, the, the, the idea of pain and suffering doesn't completely go away. Man, there are things that in times that I still, I still struggle and I still hurt and I still ask and I still have doubts. But knowing the context of John 11 and knowing that Jesus knows the ending and, and being so incredibly grateful for a God that wouldn't get mad at me or frustrated with me or disappointed with me when I have doubts or when I am overcome with grief, but he would sit with me in it and wait, knowing the ending is coming because he is faithful. That to me is a God worth pursuing. That to me is a God worth asking, what is the ending? That's a God that's worthy of my faith and my trust. That's a God that maybe has some full life worth surrendering to and following completely. I hope this has been an encouragement to you. I hope that as you've listened to these words that have come down from the centuries in John's gospel, that the story still reigns true for you today. Wherever you're feeling, wherever you're at, Jesus is with you in your hurt and your pain. But he has a future for you, a future that is new life, resurrections. As, gener as uh, Revelation says, Jesus comes to make all things new, to take away all the pain and suffering and the hurt and the shame and that one day we will be with him, and that full life will not be something that we have to strive through the pain, but we will be relieved of it in a new life, full life, fully restored, like Lazarus, like Jesus back from the grave. Thanks so much for listening today. You have a great and glorious day in the Lord. We'll see you later. <laughs>